Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about smart strategies for success and passing your road test first time. So I've got five strategies and that will help you out in terms of being successful on your road test. And know that if you're not successful the first time, it's not terminal on your road test. Now just bear with me here one sec. I'm just going to turn down the brightness on the video just a little bit here because it's a little bit too bright so that's a little bit too much oh and of course it's not there we go okay so side bio is here uh, do you have any tips for petite drivers what are their limitations and what should they take care of I love your channel I've recently passed the driver's license test Thanks, Ravi. Uh, petite drivers, you don't want to be too far or too close to the steering wheel, rather, because the, the um, airbag is there. You want to try and be at least uh, 20 uh, centimeters away from the, the steering wheel in case the airbag comes out of the um, and comes out and deploys. So you want to do that. Uh, the other thing is is that you might have to sit on a pillow on the seat. Uh, to um, make that work um, so uh, those are some of the things that you want to do and the other thing is is that check different vehicles uh, side bio what kind of vehicles are you driving um, what kind of vehicle are you driving and who is it your wife that's smaller and having some challenges with driving uh, just answer that question and we'll we'll go there Ashley pass thanks to you you are most welcome Ashley thank you so much for letting us know hall phase how are you tonight uh, chat on screen the the chat seems to be working hall phase I looked at some of those videos and all of the chat is up uh, which video specifically were you looking at and what I'll do hall phase is I'll send a message to YouTube and tell them that there's some difficulty with some of those so uh, so what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about smart strategy. I think I have five, maybe six tips for being successful on a road test. What you need to do to plan the endeavor of going forward, planning a road test. And this isn't just for road tests. It's also for anything that you do in your life. You need to know what the project is about, what the parameters of the, of, of the project are, and whether you're going to be successful on it and how you do that. So, Michael Johnson. Hi, Rick. Sorry I haven't been here live with you lately, but uh, my job owns my rear at the moment. <laughs> but I do watch him. Thank you so much, Michael. I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm involved in another business endeavor. And yes, I've been struggling uh, to do my live streams and do videos here on YouTube. So I know what you're talking about, Michael. I know what you're talking about for sure. So, Dee Anderson is taking uh, his or t her test next week and uh good luck on that yeah you're gonna do great uh is there anything d that you're struggling with on your uh preparing for your road test and if uh, are you going to be taking a uh, practice driving test with a local driving instructor or you feel fairly confident with your ability uh laura's here hi laura uh side bio yes i drive a honda civic the question is for my wife yes okay so uh, what challenges side bio is your wife having in the honda civic because honda civics are fairly decent vehicles for people who are smaller uh, having challenges in vehicles uh, does the seat not go up far enough or uh, can she not reach the pedals or can she not see out of the mirrors and observation those types of things so just just let me know what challenges she's having in that vehicle uh, destiny is here hey can you talk about tips on backing in a parking space for a road test yes i can destiny and the other thing is, uh, if you haven't seen it already, and Corey will get that up for you, is have a look at the reverse stall parking, and that'll help you out with that. Okay, Paul, how to avoid being brake checked. Uh, Paul, what you want to do is you want to maintain a good space management around your vehicle. If you're not near other drivers, it's less likely that they're going to brake check you. And especially if you're maintaining a two to three second following distance, it's less likely that other drivers are going to brake check you. Uh, generally, other drivers brake check you because you they feel that you are invading their space. And also, it's, it's partly road rage. And if people are having... Uh, you know a bad day or those types of things somebody comes banging on their door at seven o'clock in the morning to tell them to trim their hedge 
then that may lead to road rage out on the road later on. Okay, so know that. B, uh, Blanca from Olympia, Washington here passed my road test yesterday. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you so much, Blanca. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Hall face, uh, do DUI checkpoints still in still exist in North America? Yes, they do, Hall Phase. Uh, they're just, they don't seem to be as prevalent. Either they don't seem to be as prevalent or I'm not out as much at night when those are around. So they do still exist for sure. Uh, Paul, how are you, Paul? I have not talked to you for some time. You're in the Maritimes. So how are things going there in the Maritimes? Uh, this may be slightly off topic, but I thought I'd pick up, pick your brain. I had an interview with a trucking company, large carrier. Recruiter said uh, assessment, but they gave me an MV test. Fail setup. Uh, what do you mean, uh, Paul? Fail setup. What, is, what does that mean? Uh, Anita. Hi there, Anita. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so uh, Corey put up the video on space management, how to maintain following distance. And this goes back to the question um, that Paul was asking about being brake checked and road rage and those types of things. And the other thing is, is that you don't want to be brake checked, especially on <laughs> high speed freeways and those types of things, because things can go wrong really quickly. Okay, uh, Paul D, uh, taking a DOT test, CDL, a Volvo semi night transportation. There you go. Oh, even better. So D, you passed your class A. That is brilliant, awesome. Paul, thanks from the Philippines. You are most welcome, Paul. Paul Face, do you think they really work and catch DUI? Is it just a way to make money off other things? Okay. Um, oh, okay, you, uh, Paul, you felt set up to fail. Uh, were you not, so you, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, that, and that's unfortunate, Paul, that that's what happened because that often does happen. And this often happens with testing and, and we talk about a lot about this in teaching when it comes to students. Uh, what happens is the question that we're always asking ourselves as, as teachers, as instructors, we're asking ourselves, are we, are we testing what the student knows are we test, or are we testing what the student doesn't know? And this is the reason that the thrust of my channel is really about helping people pass a road test because it's very much about empowerment. And those types of things, when you're testing what the student doesn't know, you're trying to trick the student or trip them up, that's, that's about power over the student. And that's, that's really not helping anybody. It's just a power trip. And if that's what they're doing to you, Paul, then you probably don't want to work there anyway. And, and I, I do apologize for the bad experience because I know they do happen, unfortunately. Melinda, hi, Rick. Uh, thank you to your video. It helped me on my driving. I'm getting ready for my skills test next month. That's ter terrific, Melinda. Uh, are you having any challenges, Melinda, with uh, getting ready for your driving there and whatnot? Okay, uh, all about uh, vehicles. Uh, Keenan. Right. Uh, how's it going? Uh, Dex, hey, all the way from the Caribbean. We drive left of the road. Dex, that is awesome that you're from the Caribbean. That's really great. Uh, Dex, uh, I drove in Australia. I lived there for almost five years, so I know quite a bit about driving on the left. A lot of the stuff on the channel does apply to those that drive on the left, the same techniques and those types of things. But if you have any specific questions, Dex, about driving on the left side of the road, I can help you out with that. And there is a funny story uh, on one of the videos, and Corey will get that up for you, about um, driving on the other side of the road. <laughs> and I tell a funny story in there about driving the coach and actually driving on the wrong side of the road. So there you go. Okay, no, Hall of Phase, I didn't miss your question on DUIs. Uh, it's a fairly intellectual and longer conversation. And specifically here in British Columbia, what they did Hall phase a couple of years ago was is they increased police powers so that police can now suspend people's licenses uh, with a 24 hour suspension. And the reason that they were doing that is just because exactly what you were asking me, the question you were asking me about whether these uh, checks work. The problem with DUIs now is, is that they have become so complicated in booking uh, people who are being prosecuted for drunk driving that oftentimes lawyers get these people off on a technicality and there's a there's a special 
branch of the traffic force that specifically does drunk driving. So what they did was instead of all of this stuff going to court and bogging down the courts, they've increased police powers now that they have 24 hour suspensions and they can tow your car and those types of things. So does it work? I don't think it works as much as the police and other authorities would like to say that it does, that we're controlling drink driving. And there are books, academic texts that have been written about drinking and driving and, and, and in our society and the culture of that, that many of the people who are recidivists, which mean that they repeat all of the time, that it's about 10% of the people who drink and drive all the time that are continuing to do this. And no, the police checks are not being successful in controlling this there it's it's and it's it's a big problem it's a, it's a big academic question that you're asking me so whether they're being successful or not i don't really know so uh tim here says my friend tim uh basic juma tutorials if you need a website built tim my friend tim here is really great at that so look him up uh, we had a DUI road check uh, here in Victoria, right on Trans Canada. Eight officers checking four cars in each of the two lanes. That's the first I've ever seen that on a major highway, not just off an exit. So there you go. Okay, so they, they still do exist. Thank you so much for that, Tim. Uh, Jose, do you have any videos on how to climb a mountain and go down a mountain on a commercial truck? I've had a CDL since March, but I haven't climbed any mountains and just wanted to be prepared. Yes, Jose, there is a video, and Corey will get that for you, about going downhill uh, in a large commercial vehicle. Now, if you're running, Jose, if you're running tandem tandem and you're running 80,000 pounds and the grade is less than 10%, uh, you can run in fifth gear with the Jake brake or the engine brake on full and that'll get you down the hill safely. Okay. Uh, Paul, I aced the pre-trip and was relatively good on the backing, but he had me pulling 60,000 pounds in a truck. He didn't, he, he didn't explain to me. So they basically threw you into a new truck, Paul, that you hadn't been in before with a load on and, and didn't really give you any sort of um, guidance about what they wanted to do and those types of things. All right, uh, Ashley, I watched your video about judging gap, was still a little bit confused. How close is too close when turning and how close do you uh, close when changing lanes? Uh, those are difficult questions, Ashley, about judging gap. And one of the things I realized when I shot that video on how to judge gap was is that it's, it's an experiential thing when we teach students about gap. And what I might suggest to you, Ashley, is if you're having difficulty with judging gap is to work with a veteran driver or hire a driving instructor for a couple of hours and go out with him or her and work with them on working on judging gap. And that'll that'll definitely help you out because I, as I said in the video, it's very much an experiential thing and I learned how difficult it was to kind of make that video because most of the time when I teach drivers, whether it's a commercial vehicle or whether it's a passenger vehicle, we do it by, no, no, there isn't enough gap and we go. But I can just kind of say that you know, in town, you're going to need sort of six to eight seconds and on the highway, you could, it could be anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds, depending on how fast the tra traffic is traveling and depending on how congested the traffic is. So it kind of depends on a lot of different things. Anthony, I had my G1 exit test on Monday. I wanted an, opi an uh, opinion. If nerves get the better of me and I mess up at the approach for a parallel Bay Park, is it better to fix it or to ask to do it again? Now, Anthony, one of the things I wanna say is just remember to breathe. Remember that on, for a road test, it's not about perfect, it's about pass. If you can just get the vehicle in between the lines, for example, if you're reverse stall parking, it's better to just do that and then carry on with it. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just going for a pass. And thank you so much for the compliment on the videos. I'm glad we could help out. Uh, it was brutal. No rev explanation. Appreciate your insight. You're most welcome, Paul. Uh, anything we can do to help out. Uh, Paul Nemino, uh, uh, for moderate to heavy traffic situations, does two crocodiles apply or just one? Uh, Paul, for moderate to heavy traffic situations, you want to increase your following distance. And especially if the uh, if as the speed increases, sometimes you want to have a three second following distance, maybe even a five second dis uh, following distance, depending on whether traffic conditions deteriorate or whatnot. Okay, Ashley, you are most welcome. Anything we can do to help you out. Uh, Dex, you're most welcome. Okay, uh, so there we go. And Mage, uh, Mage, 
I wanted to come to the stream to thank you quickly for helping me pass my road test. I was absolutely nervous and anxious when I took it, but I used your, used your advice on keeping calm. That's great. We're so glad we could help you out, Mage, in passing your road test. That is absolutely awesome. I love it when people come and talk to me. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about with smart drivers is we have a new endeavor. That's probably the word I'm going to use right now. Uh, that is wor what we're working on right now. I was going to try and get it up for the 15th, but the 15th is tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether we're going to be successful in getting it up for the 15th. But uh, what we're going to do is over on the website, we're going to have uh, a new initiative and we're going to move to help 100,000 smart drivers pass the road test in one calendar year. That's what we're going to do. And every month we're going to have a draw for a $100 fuel card for uh, all the people who come to the website, tell us that they've passed the road test. We'll go into a draw and every, once a month we'll have a draw and the successful smart driver will uh, get a $100 fuel card. So that's what we're going to do in the next year is we're going to have that initiative, 100,000 smart drivers passing road tests. We want to help 100,000 drivers to pass the road test and get their license in the next year. And that's for air brakes, uh, CDL license, and for passenger vehicles. So that's what we're going to be doing. So stay tuned for that. We're going to get more information about that. This is a new idea, a new in initiative, and we're going to help you out with passing your road test. Okay, generation four. I just failed my road test. What to do? I'm so sad. I have no way to getting to my sports next week for school. Okay, generation four, know that this is not the end of the world. You didn't fail. You simply had an unsuccessful attempt. Take it as a learning experience. Yes, you're upset. Take a couple of days, be upset, sit on the couch, eat Doritos, you know, be mad at the world because sometimes when we're not successful with things, we're upset about the world and those types of things. And that's okay. But know that you need to get back on the horse. You need to start practicing again. Take the results that you got from your driving test. Work on those bits that the examiner said, listen, you need to work on this. You need to work on that and other um, maneuvers and skills for the purposes of passing your road test. You are going to be successful. So know that. It's just a matter of um, doing the work doing the test again and being successful and know that you're going to be successful okay failure is not terminal you're going to be successful so work for so work and go forward okay hall phase are you going to make a video explain 100,000 drivers uh smart drivers passing your road test yes i am hall phase i'm going to make a video i'm going to explain all this uh, i'm starting to get some of it into my head about how this is going to take shape and how we're going to move forward with this so uh, yes, I'm definitely going to make a video. I'm definitely going to put it up and I'm probably going to run some paid advertising both on YouTube and on uh, Facebook to do that. So, uh, Melinda, yes, it's very challenging. Keep watching your videos will help. Thanks so much, Melinda. Uh, Guwap family, I passed watching your videos. You are most welcome. Uh, Guwap, where did you pass your road test? Uh, and are you planning any road trips to succeed? All right, so next tip. So the first tip for smart strategies for being successful on passing a road test is doing your research, planning what you need to do. So we know that uh, when you do your research for the purposes of passing a road test, that there are four fundamental skills that you need regardless of class of license, observation, communication, speed management, space management. You need those four things in place to be successful. You also know that there are some uh, maneuvers that you need to do. You need to do a three-point turn. You need to do two-point reverse turn, reverse stall parking, uh, parallel parking, all of those maneuvers. So you know for the purposes of a road test and you know that you need to be able to pilot the vehicle down a road. You need to change lanes. You need to merge and those types of things. So you get all the planning and you get the research in place and you know exactly what you need to do. You need to know what project you need to do and, and, and the parameters of that project. And, that, and this is doesn't just apply for your license it applies for any project that you're going to move forward with so uh, that's what you need to do that's number one is planning the next thing that you need to do is you need to both show up 
and you need to be, do, and have. And let me just explain be, do, and have. So if you're gonna go for your license and you're gonna be a successful driver, a licensed driver, you're, you're gonna be in your mind, I am a licensed driver. You need to think that, you need to be that. It's the same thing as if you're gonna practice sports or you're gonna practice music. You're gonna, and you're, you've got a goal. I'm gonna be a successful hockey player. I'm gonna play forward and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna score so many goals within a set amount of time. It's the same thing with your license. I'm going to pass my road test within six weeks. So you're gonna be that and then you're gonna do that. You're gonna do the things that you need to do to pass your road test. You're gonna practice your parallel parking, your three point turns, your two point reverse turns. And finally, you're going to have the stuff that you need to do that. You need to have a car, you need to have shoes, clothes, uh, you know, whatever else you need to do. You need to have insurance and those types of things. So be, do, and have. You're gonna be a licensed driver, you're gonna do the work that you need to do to get there, and then finally, you're gonna have a car, you're gonna have insurance, you're gonna have all those things that allow you to do that. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, okay, Paul, 10 p.m. here, so uh, watch this tomorrow, thank you, sir. You're most welcome, Paul. Thank you so much for your comments and showing up. Okay, so there we go. Uh, Shane is here in Vancouver. Hi, Shane. Ramard, I failed my road test in Waco, Texas. It was a struggle for me. Uh, Ramard, as I said, take a day, maybe two days, be down, eat Doritos, watch telly, be mad at the world. But after a couple of days, get back in the car and start practicing again. Take the feedback. I know it's upsetting. I know that you're kind of mad at the world right now, but you didn't fail. You were simply unsuccessful and you will be a licensed driver. So know that. Okay. Shane, uh, I passed my road test last month, class five. Thanks for all the videos. I learned a lot. God bless more power, sir. Thank you so much, Shane, for the endorsement. That's really awesome. Okay, uh, Hall Phase, do you have another YouTube channel? Just wondering. Yes, I do have another YouTube channel, Hall Phase, but I'm not really, I haven't done any work on it. There's a couple of videos on it. Uh, I had aspirations when I started Smart Drive Test that I was going to do another YouTube channel, but it was kind of like when I went to graduate school and I thought that I was gonna learn how to speak Mandarin Chinese at the same time. Uh, there just isn't enough hours in the day to be able to do that. So uh, Rick August PhD is my other YouTube channel and there's a, there's actually a website, but there's not much on it. So <laughs> there's my buddy, Tim, uh, 100,000 licenses is web guy is being a slacker, but he said it online. So now I have to do it quickly. There we go. Thank you so much, Tim. If we can get that going, that'd be great. Uh, Dorcas, yet to go for my road test next month, but very nervous. Now your videos are very helpful. My major problem is parallel parking. Okay, so Dorcas, so if your parallel parking is your major problem, focus on that. Uh, work with the cones first, and then that way it's not going to be as intimidating. And learn what the parameters are for parallel parking at the licensing center where you're going to be taking your road test and that'll help you out okay but practice with the cones first and Corey will put the video up for you on parallel parking with cones okay uh dorcas you're most welcome epic 112 very good tips rickson it seems how to speed maneuver such as parallel parking gets me a hard time to pass the road test should low uh, speed practice help me to pass that portion yes absolutely epic 112 it comes down to just about any project, and this is what I'm talking about kind of in, intermittently between answering questions is uh, that the fundamentals, anybody can do stuff fast. We can all drive a car and we can drive it down the freeway and we can drive fast, but that's not really where your skills develop. The skills in driving really develop from slow speed maneuvers. And if you can practice slow speed maneuvers and you can master those, it is going to improve your overall driving. It's the same thing with martial arts. When you practice the fundamentals, you are going to become a better practitioner overall. It's the same thing when you practice music. If you're studying an instrument, when you practice chords on a piano or on a guitar or whatever instrument you're playing, it's going to make you a better musician overall. And it's the same thing with driving. If you practice the fundamentals of driving, which are the slow speed maneuvers, two point reverse turns, three point turns, parallel parking, reverse stall parking. If you practice those and you are really good at those, it is going to improve your overall driving because you're going to have control of the primary controls and you're going to know where the vehicle is in space and place and it's going to make you a much better driver. So know that for anybody who's doing any endeavor and learning any skill, all of that is going to make you better at that skill. 
All right, uh, Ender, you live in Australia because you just said telly. <laughs> well, I don't live in Australia right now, Ender. I did live in Australia, and I, yeah, I do call it telly. So <laughs> I, I, there's some some of the language bits that I haven't lost. Uh, hall phase, how much money does it cost to buy those pylons or cones? Hall phase, uh, you don't have to buy those delineators, those 36 inch one meter tall pylons. You can go to any rental shop and pick them up, and I think you can rent four of them for about ten or twelve dollars for the day. Uh, it's just not worth. I mean, what are you going to do with them <laughs> after you learn how to drive? Uh, they're really cheap. Any rental shop uh, usually has those. Uh, if 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 you don't have a rental shop in the area where you live, uh, simply go down to Walmart and pick up those short. Uh, witches hats the orange pylons and then just put a stick in the top of them to extend them out and make them taller that works too uh, so there's a couple of options there so uh remarge you're most welcome ender i can't wait to pass my physical test and come back here and thank you yet again heck you might even get a couple more because i'm thinking about later getting my class cdl that is awesome ender i hope you do pursue that and work on getting your commercial license and pursuing a career as a bus or truck driver. So Shane, you're in Vancouver. Awesome, really great. Okay, so tip number uh, two, we talked about number two, showing up, doing the work that you need to do to be successful in whatever endeavor that you're going for. For us, we're talking about road tests. So you show up every day and you practice and you drive and don't just drive around in town or drive around on the highway make sure that you're doing parallel parking you're doing reverse stall parking those types of things so show up do the work every day uh it's like the project that i'm working on right now we're renovating a house and i show up every day whether i can only show up for a couple of hours or three hours i show up every day and i do something it's like my youtube channel i want my youtube channel to continue to be successful i want to continue to help smart drivers so every day I spend half an hour, an hour answering comments. I'm not doing as much work as I should be, but I am maintaining the channel. And it's the same thing when you're learning how to drive or you're learning how to be a musician or you're learning how to be a hockey player or some other sports. You need to be doing something every day. So show up every day and do something. I know because the hardest part of any project is starting and if you can just start in the day and do something you're going to be successful and you're going to be on that path to being successful okay ain't uh ender my girlfriend's mad at me because i listened to your advice more than hers in my defense she wasn't taught how to drive she taught herself and how she got her license <laughs> is a mystery <laughs> well ender i'm i'm not going to get involved in that because i want you to continue to you know, have a relationship with your girlfriend. So, Angel, uh, your tips on how to do an offset to uh, an offset to the left. Okay, Angel, I'm not quite sure what an offset to the left is. I'm not. Um, are you talking about reverse stall parking? Is that what you're talking about, Angel? Just clarify that. <laughs> I called the bathroom that thunderbox. Uh, that's pretty funny, Ender. There we go. Uh, tuna fish, I failed my test to get my driver's license. How can I prove my next one? Okay, so tuna fish, you didn't fail. You were simply unsuccessful. And as I've said to other smart drivers, take a couple of days, be down, be mad at the world, eat Doritos, sit in front of the television in your underwear, those types of things, you know, because we're upset, because we were unsuccessful. And it's, it, it's not fun, okay? But take a couple of days and just be down but then know that you got to get back in the car you got to practice take the feedback from the examiner that you got practice those skills and uh, maneuvers that you need to improve for the purposes of being successful on your road test do that know that and if if it might work out hire a driving instructor for maybe one or two lessons and go out with them and they can assess your feedback now the other thing that i i counsel all smart drivers to do is as you're working towards your test day in the few days before your test get a, a practice driving test booked with a driving instructor these are often inexpensive in the united states i've heard in bronx from sam who works for rookie auto driving school that they will do a practice driving test 
for $20. Well, for $20, you're going to guarantee that you pass your road test first time because driving instructors teach people how to pass a road test every day. That's what they do. That's their job. So they're going to be able to give you feedback. So I counsel and I strongly encourage you to book a practice driving test with your drive with the driving school before you go for your road test. That is going to help you out and going to guarantee that you be successful. So tuna fish, you weren't, you didn't fail. You were simply unsuccessful, and you're going to take the test again, and you're going to be successful, and you're going to become a licensed driver. So know that. Yes, hall phase. You're absolutely correct. Driving is 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 like doing a sport. It's like doing music. It's like having a business enterprise it's anything that you're going to do in your life is practice 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 but at one and the same time you want to practice correctly and oftentimes we need mentors we need experts we need help from other people and that's where I come in because I'm an expert in helping people pass a road test and that's what I will help you to do. And that's the other thing that I suggest to you in terms of hiring a driving instructor because I can't be in the car with you. I can give you general information about being successful on a road test, but a driving instructor in and around your local area where you're going to take your road test can give you specific information about the roads you're going to drive on. They can give you specific information about the examiners who are going to test you for your road test. And they can give you specific information about different intersections because as I learn every day from smart drivers there are different uh, configurations of intersections and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky and unless I'm there with the vehicle in the vehicle with you I cannot give you that kind of specific information and as well uh, some driving centers will want you to do hand over hand others will want you to do hand to hand and Another one is, is that left-hand turns. There's two schools of thoughts on left-hand turns. One is to put the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line, which is the one that I advocate and the one that I teach to students. And the reason that I teach that to students is, is that that way you're committed to the turn, but you're not in the intersection in case something goes wrong. Other driving instructors are going to want you to move right out in the, into the intersection, which I don't advocate, but it is another school of thought. And at some driving centers, they're going to expect you to do that for the purposes of passing your road test. So know that. Okay. Hall phase, you're most welcome. And anything we can do you to help out. Okay. So number four. Uh, no, number, yeah, number four. Here we go. So when you're doing a project, when you're, when you're doing your road test and you're practicing to work up to your road test, to take your road test, be sure that you celebrate the little successes. Know that in the terms of going from starting to learn how to drive a vehicle to passing a road test, you, you have both enabling objectives and you have terminal objectives. So the terminal objective is going from learning how to drive, starting to learn how to drive, to passing a road test and becoming a licensed driver. In there, there are enabling objectives. It's, think of it like a staircase. Every step is another enabling objective. So you have to learn how to parallel park. You have to learn how to control the throttle. You have to learn how to control the brake, manipulate the steering wheel. You have to do right turns, left turns, cha lane changes. So if you learn how to parallel park and you successfully do that one day, go home and celebrate. Have a popsicle. Have your favorite dish for dinner. Uh, go out with your friends and go to the coffee shop and sit and talk and yak about learning how to drive and those types of things. So celebrate the little successes because I think most of us, what happens is that when we're learning how to drive, and, and Sean Cannell said this really well the other day, and if you haven't checked out his stuff, have a look at Sean Cannell, because I love Sean, Sean Cannell's stuff. He says, oftentimes what happens with people is, is that they, they compare their beginning to somebody else's middle and somebody else's end. And you don't want to do that, because your start is not the same as somebody else's middle. You want to compare your start and you want to celebrate your successes not you know you don't want to compare yourself and where you are in driving to where I am I've been driving for 30 years I've driven commercial vehicles I've driven in two or three countries you can't possibly compare yourself to me when you're learning how to drive so be sure to take some time out and celebrate your little successes and know that on the way to your big uh, uh, terminal objective of bit passing your license and being successful there's going to be all these little goals that you're going to achieve along the way and be sure to, to to celebrate those little successes as you're going along all right uh 
Roshan, in case of a left turn and the light turns green, you go to the middle when it turns yellow, but the way is not clear. What if I get stuck at a red light in the middle of the intersection? Okay, Roshan, you're not going to get stuck in the intersection. Okay, uh, do have a look at the intersection, uh, the video on left-hand turns. It's not the first one, but the other one, because what happens is the truck goes into the intersection. He's, the, the driver's waiting and a tractor trailer comes through the intersection. When you're in the intersection, you must clear the intersection. So um, when you're sitting there waiting, the light goes to yellow, you start to move forward, straight forward into the intersection. And when you're absolutely sure that the oncoming traffic has come to a stop, then you make your left-hand turn and you clear the intersection. That's how you do that for the purposes of a road test. All right. Okay. Uh, hall phase. Rick, I want to eventually learn how to ride a motorcycle. Any tips to get me started? Yes. Uh, hall phase. One of the things that I do advocate for new drivers of motorcycles is I strongly encourage you to take a course because on a motorcycle, there are no fender benders. Okay. If you get into a crash on a motorcycle, you're going to be injured or you're going to be unfortunately a fatality. And when, when people are learning how to drive a motorcycle, it's best to take the course. It's best to work with a motorcycle instructor and learn the dangers of riding a motorcycle and putting in defensive strategies that can keep you safe on a motorcycle. So that is one of the things that I really strongly recommend for new drivers and driving motorcycles. Ender, I have a really important question for you. Growing up, everybody always said, keep your hands on the steering wheel at 10 and two, but it's technically nine and three. Now, isn't it because of the airbags? Actually, because of the airbags, Ender, it's now eight and two, which is completely uncomfortable for most people. So what I tell students is just put the hand, your hands on the steering wheel where it is comfortable for you. If it's 10 and, 10 and two, then put them at 10 and two. If it's nine and three, put them there. Most driving instructors and most driving examiners are not going to uh, insist that you have your hands at eight and two. And yes, there is some discrepancy about that and there's some discussion about that because of the airbags, but I don't think it's as, I don't think they're pushing it as much as it's being kind of touted in the literature and the driving manuals and those types of things. Uh, Melinda, by the way, my driving instructor wants me to do or force me to do hand over hand. What should I do if I can't really do it as she wants me? I'm only a beginner and trying my best to do it. Okay, Melinda, what I would suggest if you're having some challenges with hand over hand is Corey will put up the video there on learning how to drive. Uh, go back to the parking lot, Melinda, and get some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and practice learning how to do that in the parking lot with those pylons. And, and Corey, I'll put that video up for you and that'll help you out in terms of getting comfortable with hand over hand and manipulating the steering wheel in combination with the throttle and with the brake. So that's what I suggest that you do in order and working on that. And the reason that your driving instructor is pushing you for that, uh, Melinda, because if you don't do that on your road test and you're doing hand to hand and they expect you to do hand over hand, it's going to be slower and the driving examiner is going to think that you don't have due care and control of the vehicle. And that's the reason that your driving instructor is insisting that you do that. Okay. Hall phase for parallel park three, uh, parking scaring big and I had to parallel park them. Uh, that didn't really make sense. Hall phase. Uh, also, here's the video on topic of hand positions. There we go. Okay. Yudawadi, I Rick, uh, thank you so much for your videos. All are helpful. I fear of driving alone. I try to practice driving very early in the morning for lesser traffic, but I need to drive in the dark. Any advice? Yes, uh, driving in the dark. Uh, follow other traffic for the most part. Know that as you get away from uh, urban areas and those types of things, that you're going to rely more on your headlights. You might might have to slow down a little bit. Know that road signs are reflective. They're going to mark out where the road is. Uh, and they're going to be reflectors and those types of things. Also look at the geography, look for houses along the roadways and all of that will help you out. Okay. Uh, so some of that stuff and as well, uh, Corey, I'll put up the video on night driving and that's going to help you out. Uh, Noble Tents, uh, thoughts on Kia cars, specifically Kia Nitro 2018 model. Um, Noble, um, what I would suggest, I, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, Kias would not be my first choice of cars, but I think that if you're buying a new model, I think you're going to have a fairly extensive warranty, which is probably going to cover you. 
Uh, so, I mean, that's a possibility. I mean, some other smart drivers might have some ideas about that type of vehicle. Uh, people on the replay, if you're watching on the replay and you like what you see here, consider subscribing, consider giving it a thumbs up and give Noble some feedback on the uh, Kia Nit Niro, Kia Niro 2018. Uh, Noble, have you looked up any of the reviews on Google and those types of things? What are those saying? Uh, Nick, okay, sorry to hear about your road test. Rumor, uh, PG channel here, so try and keep it all good. Uh, Nick, take a couple of days. I know you're upset. I know it's, it's disheartening when you're not successful on your road test. Uh, take a couple of days, sit in your underwear, watch telly, eat Doritos. <laughs> Uh, but you know, get back practicing, take the uh, feedback that you got from the driving examiner uh, and put that into play and practice those skills as well as counsel you next time before you go for a road test, uh, book a practice driving test with a driving school and go out and they'll be able to give you some feedback and those types of things and next time you're absolutely going to be uh, successful on your road test and watch the videos here on the channel. All of that's going to help you out. Okay, hall phase riding a motorcycle is much more dangerous than driving a normal car. Yes, hall phase uh, on a motorcycle, you are 35 times more likely to die in a traffic crash than you are in a car because, like, like we say, there are no fender benders on a motorcycle. Okay, uh, so there's less margin of error. Okay, uh, Melinda, you're most welcome. Uh, JFSA 380 for the joyous winters that bless Canada is all wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or front wheel drive the best for overall driving assuming good winter tires on all uh jfsa i advocate for winter driving either all wheel drive or front wheel drive rear wheel drive is something to be reckoned with in the winter time especially if it's a pickup truck and you have a really big imbalance of weight on the vehicle as you do in a pickup truck so know that okay uh, and add 4x4 into the mix, yeah. Now, one of the things in JFSA uh, is, is that have a look on the video, the interview that I did with Gary about tires and the importance of tires on your vehicle because this is, this is a good point that you're raising about good tires and all. Any vehicle will get going in the snow on slippery conditions and those types of things. What really um, is most important in the wintertime is being able to get your vehicle stopped. So know that, that you're going to have to drive to the conditions and know that you're going to have to get your vehicle stopped. So it becomes more imperative in the winter time that you have good space management around your vehicle and that you're going to be able to get your vehicle stopped without striking a fixed object or another road user. Okay, so all of that's going to be uh, coming into the mix. And then 4x4s, yes, that's those are good as well. The problem with 4x4s is that you're going to compromise fuel economy. So it's not going to be as good. Um, some of the all-wheel drive and front-wheel drives are going to do really well. And especially front-wheel drive because all of the weight of the engine is over the front end. And that's going to help you out. Okay, uh, Nick, you're most welcome. <laughs> and you will just do some practice, practice maneuvers. Do a practice driving test, Nick, and you. I have no doubt that you will be successful on your next attempt on your road test. Uh, is there any motorcycle instructors in the New York areas? Uh, hall phase, I don't know that uh, about motorcycle instructors. I mean, Sam might be around or watch the replay, and Sam would be able to give us some information about motorcycle schools. But I know for a fact that there will be motorcycle uh, schools in and around the New York area that will be able to help you out. Okay, uh, Noble, Niro 2018 has good rating. Checked uh, the Kelly Blue Book, but because it's new, there isn't any data on its resale value. Yeah, so there's not going to be any uh, um, information about its resale value, obviously, because it's a new vehicle. It's a 2018. But essentially what you want to do, uh, Noble, is you want to look at uh, some of the car magazines, all of these are going to do ratings on these vehicles and they're going to give you information about its reliability and those types of things. Now, in terms of reliability and how long the vehicle is going to last, uh, you know, for example, we all know that, you know, Dodge pickup trucks, Chevrolets and Fords, that you're going to get about 100 100,000 miles out of these things and then you're going to start having to maintain them and put money into them. And I, I think that because Kia, now some of the smart drivers might correct me if I'm incorrect on this, but I believe that Kia belongs to General Motors. It's a subsidiary of General Motors. 
and it's probably something similar that once you get around the 100,000 mile mark, uh, you're probably going to have to start maintaining it. There's parts that are going to have to be replaced and those types of things. It's kind of like my Honda CRV. Uh, yes, it's 20 years old. It's got 300,000 kilometers on it. And at 300,000 kilometers, I had to start putting money into it. I had to replace the exhaust, uh, new windshield, uh, new electronics, new distributor. You know, it, it, there was some fairly significant outlay, but it is 300,000 kilometers. I put three or $4,000 into it. But, you know, every vehicle has that. I just know, I just don't know on the Kias at what sort of mileage that is, whether that's 100,000 miles, or whether that's 125,000 miles, it could be anything, so. All right, so one more thing on being successful on getting your license. Know that when you're successful and you get your license, there's going to be a short period of euphoria and then there's gonna be this period of anticlimactic because as you're working towards a project, you know, a successful end to a project and you have a goal in place, uh, we're all going to be working towards that, but then you get there and you're like, well, now what? We're looking for the next cookie. We're le looking for the next mountain. Do take some time and congratulate yourself on being successful and know that you did the work and you worked the plan and you were successful on getting your license. It's going to be a little bit climatic, but before you sort of get to the end, you know, start looking for your next project. I'm going to go for a big road trip. I'm going to celebrate my successes and those types of things. So that's kind of how you plan a project and how you are successful and you show up and do the work. So the first thing is to do the plan, do the research. What work do you have to do to be successful? How do I get from learning how to drive a car to being successful and being a licensed driver? That you gotta show up, you gotta do the work. Be, do, and have. You gotta be a licensed driver. You gotta do the work. You gotta practice the maneuvers. And then finally, you gotta have a car and all of those other things that you need, insurance and whatnot. So know that. Do something every day. Practice driving every day. Go out and do the slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. Do the actual work that you need to do. Know that there are two types of objectives. There's the terminal objective and the enabling objective. The terminal objective is being a licensed driver and then each of the enabling objectives is a step towards that final goal. Celebrate your successes on the way to your terminal objective. Okay, start strong, finish strong. So start strong, do the work. When you get to the middle, you're gonna sag a little bit. Your motivation is gonna sag a little bit, but make sure that you continue to do something every day on your way to that goal of getting your license or whatever uh, project you're going to be doing. And then uh, know that when you get to the end and you're actually successful and you pass your road test, that it's going to be a little anticlimactic. So, no, so have maybe have an overlap between the goal of, you know, being successful on your road test and then your next success. But do celebrate that and do go for a road trip, trip or something like that. Celebrate with your friends. Talk to your friends and have a support group in place. And know that oftentimes you can't reach your goals without a mentor or without experts and other teachers that come into play and who are going to be able to show you the path and say, listen, you need to work on this, you need to do that. So that's how you manage a project and how you're successful and how you work on projects through your life and become a licensed driver, become a musician, become a sports player, whatever you're going to be doing in your life, this is how you work on that, how you do that, okay? Uh, haul phase, where'd you go? Uh, I see on uh, dirt bikes and toto bikes all the time. Those are the people who, peb <laughs> yeah, unfortunately they do. Um, because the other thing haul phase about motorcycles is that the people who ride motorcycles tend to be risk takers. They, they're more prone to uh, high risk activity. So yes, that tends to be true. Um, Yes, so do that. Speed limits are to slower, however. Okay, as Dory says, just keep swimming. Absolutely 380. <laughs> great, great advice. Yes, and, and as you're working towards becoming a licensed driver, whatever project, become a musician, and those types of things, you just got to keep doing the work. And you have to believe. You have to be that licensed driver. You have to be a musician. You have to be a sports player. Uh, you know, it's the same thing when I started this enterprise and I started doing my YouTube channel. I can remember saying the first year, nobody will ever watch this. And boy, was I wrong as we're nearing 70,000 subscribers on the Smart Driver channel. Uh, 
I've kept doing the work and it has been successful and as long as you keep doing the work and you just keep on swimming, you're gonna be successful in your projects and endeavors and those types of things in your life. So if you're watching on the replay, consider subscribing. If you like what you see here, give it a thumbs up. Uh, for all those of you watching now, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I think we're going to end it there for tonight. And I would like to thank everybody for showing up, everybody for asking questions and engaging. Uh, congratulations to all of those who have passed the road test in the last week. And thanks for dropping by and telling me that you passed your road test. And again, I'll have more information. I'll have a video up about helping 100,000 smart drivers pass the road test in the next calendar year. We're going to have an initiative over on the Smart Drive Test website, uh, www.smartdrivetest.com. And uh, we're going to have a gas card for every all the smart drivers who tell, me, tell us that they've passed the road test are going to go into a draw and uh, be eligible for that $100 gas card. It's going to be eligible. Uh, it's going to be open to uh, all the smart drivers in North America. And we'll send that out to you in the form of a gift card. And for those of you who have a road test coming up this week, good luck on your road test. And if you, you can manage it, uh, do a practice driving test with a local driving school. And that'll be able to give you some feedback on your driving skills and abilities and those types of things. Okay, Hall of Faith, 70,000 people. Do you know how much people that is? <laughs> 70,000 people, Hall of Faith? I think that's probably about the same number of people that show up at an ACDC concert. concert. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Ashley, good night, Hall of Faith, JFSA. Thank you so much. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.